Uh, good afternoon for everyone. Good afternoon and thank you for invitation to be a part of this converse, cons conversation and to share our experience with you. Uh, for almost three months now, the Ukrainian people have been courageously defending themselves against a military attack by the Russian Federation, which has invaded to the territory of our sovereign and independent country. Nowadays, rocket attacks and bombings have covered almost the entire territory of our country. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church fully shares the pain and suffering of the Ukrainian people. On the first day of the war, his Beatitude Metropolitan of Kiev and all Ukraine Unufri was addressed to the Ukrainian people with condemning the military actions that Russia launched against Ukraine, calling them war, and church was calling to the people of Ukraine to be courageous and unite against a common enemy. Also, Metropolitan Onufri immediately appealed to Russian President Vladimir Putin to stop the war, and he named the war against Ukraine Cain's assassinations because it repeats the first scene of murder that took place on earth when Adam's son Cain killed his younger brother Abel. Also on this first day, all churches in KU were opened, especially those with basements, so that people could take refuge in them in case of danger. On February 28, the Holy Synod of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church asked Patriarch Kirill for appeal to the President and leadership of the Russian Federation to stop the war. From the first day, days of the war, all dioceses, monasteries, priests and laity began to provide humanitarian aid to refugees and all those in need. For example, about 5,000 refugees were admitted to the Ben Chen Monastery alone, its west, its west part of Ukraine. Priests are helping to organize territorial defense points constantly bring food, prepare food, buy medicine, donate money, rebuild churches for shelter and medical hospitals. We receive a lot of humanitarian aid from the Orthodox churches in Europe, such as the Ru Romanian Orthodox Church, the Serbian Orthodox Church and the Polish Orthodox Church. Uh, the Suchava Archdiocese of the Romanian Orthodox Church alone sent 450,000 tons of humanitarian needs. 800,000 tons came from the entire Romanian Orthodox Church. The Serbian Orthodox Church helped a lot with the money which was sent from the Council of Bishops to his Beatitude Metropolitan Onufri. The Polish Orthodox Church in Poland helps the refugee a lot. Also many Churches and organizations also help in such a uh, fund of Renovabis, Caritas, Communion of St. Egidius, etc. Since the beginning of the hostilities, many fake reports have appeared on social network and even in some mass media, including that weapons are hidden in monasteries and churches of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, but no case has been confirmed all cases have been refuted by national police and security service of Ukraine. All this has all the hallmarks of hybrid aggression against Ukraine in order to destabilize the domestic situation. 14 of the 53 dioceses of our church are suffering from hostilities. It should be noted that in the diocese affected by the fighting, there are more than 3,000 parishes and 62 monasteries where, even at the risk of their lives, 3,000 and almost 2,000 monks continue to serve for Ukrainian people. Our church is suffering from shelling. Many of our churches, as well as other religious buildings, were damaged and destroyed. Ukrainian Orthodox Church prays for peace in Ukraine, for Ukrainian soldiers, for victory over the invader, and unfortunately, their funeral service for the Ukrainian fallen soldiers. But instead of uniting the people in the aim of victory and the restoration of peaceful life, 
in the country is opening a domestic religious front. Thus, a group of people's deputies of Ukraine submitted to the Parliament of Ukraine laws that banning the life and serving of our church. And in various regions of Ukraine, there are cases of local governments making illegal decisions to ban or restrict the activities of local religious communities of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. With the tacit concept or with the active intervention of local authorities, the seizure of our churches intensified. For instance, yesterday in Boroslav, Lviv region, officials decided to ban the parish of our church. The relevant decisions of the Boroslav City Council has been published on the administration's website and will start on 1st of June. The document of the liquidation of the canonical church states a ban on the use of church for meetings and services, as well as the procedure of forcible seizure of real estate into the communal property of the Boroslav territorial community. All criminal acts directed against the Ukrainian Orthodox Church show signs of subversive and sabotage activities and are unacceptable. Any decisions to ban our church and restrict the rights of its believers are criminal and it's, it is violated of the constitu Constitution of Ukraine. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church has always been, is and will be with its people. Ukrainian Orthodox Church always supported and continues to support the state sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. We believe and pray every day that the war we are expecting today will soon be over. We will win this war and we will once again enjoy in peace, in peace the gift of life the Lord has given to everyone, not to kill each other, but to love each other. That's all. Thank you.